Good morning on this Trinity Sunday to worship at St. Mark's Newton Arts. Wherever you are worshiping with us from this morning, you are very welcome as we join together in praise of God. And we greet each other in the name of the Lord. The Lord be with you. I wonder if you're a bit like me when you meet um, two kids from the same family, maybe for the first time, two brothers who look quite alike, two sisters who have a very similar haircut. Do you struggle to tell the difference? Do you know if I see and meet sisters called Wilma and Edna, sure enough I end up calling Wilma Edna and Edna Wilma. It's just inevitable. And I'll complain and defend myself. I'll say, well, they live in the same house, they wear the same clothes, they speak in the, with the same turn of phrase. How am I supposed to know the difference? Uh, it takes me a long time to get confident to know my murals from my Florences. And of course, it works both ways because people often say to Gemma and I, you're two girls, they, they are so similar, I find it hard to tell them apart. But to me, I know them so well that I have no problem with those two. I know them by the sound of their voice. I even know them by the sound of their footsteps walking along the hallway or climbing the stairs. I know them and I can tell which one it is. And I'm always actually amazed then when people say to me, oh, your girls are very much alike. As I said at the start, today is Trinity Sunday. The day in the church calendar when we think specifically about God who is three persons in one God. That idea often really confuses people. How can God be three and yet still be one? How can you tell the three persons of God apart? What are, what, what are their characteristics? be honest with you, even ministers get a little bit edgy, a little bit nervous on Trinity Sunday. We're trying to unpick this concept, but we're trying to do it uh, without unwittingly uh, speaking a heresy. But you know, if you think about it, it's a little bit like me trying to tell those brothers or those sisters apart, or you trying to get a handle on which one is Lydia and which one is Eva. Just as is the case with brothers and sisters, the more you get to know God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the easier it is to know which one is which. And even though they live in the same house, so to speak, and they look very similar, they share many characteristics, you get to know and recognize what is distinct about them. And you grow to love and experience and enjoy each person of God for who they are. So let's pray that we would get to know God better through our worship today, get to know the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and all-encompassing God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as we worship you this day, help us to get to know you better. May we enjoy getting to know you, and may that enjoyment empower us to build your kingdom on earth. We lift up these prayers to your throne. Amen. And our opening song of praise today uh, sings about God in three persons, the Blessed Trinity.
We now take an opportunity to turn ourselves towards God, to say sorry, to hold up our hands and admit those things that we have done wrong. Those times when we have caused division and hurt and not built God's church as he would have us. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God our Redeemer. Let us pray. God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you gather, protect and care for us, your beloved, through word and spirit. Have mercy upon us and forgive us for sinning against you. We have not loved one another as we should. We have not sown the seeds of gospel hope. We have not been present for worship. Restore us, Lord. May we give ourselves willingly and joyfully to be of benefit and blessing to one another, that we may truly share one faith, have one calling, and be of one soul and mind. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us for our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now we sing a song which speaks powerfully of God's presence and his faithfulness through our times of doubt and of failure and even of crisis. In this song we're reminded that in our wrestling and in our doubts, in our failures, God doesn't walk out. His great love will see us through and he is the peace in our troubled sea. Sitting in my doubts, in my faith, you will walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. You are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't.
as we come together to listen to God's word, we're reminded that it is a light to guide us through the murky moments of life, giving us light to direct our thoughts and our decisions, and moreover, to give us hope that in the midst of that murkiness, God is near. Your word is a lantern to my feet and the light upon my path. O Lord, your word is everlasting. It stands firm forever in the heavens. Let us then receive the word of the Lord. So may the light of your presence shine into our hearts. Our gospel reading is found in John chapter 3, and we begin to read at the first verse. There was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs that you are doing if God was not with them. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born again when they're old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at me saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases, you hear it sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things. Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you did, do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Every Saturday in the Belfast Telegraph, Alf McCreary, the religious correspondent, interviews a local person about their faith. One of the questions he asks is, what makes you feel closest to God? The answers given include being out in nature, being beside the sea, for instance, as, as the waves are crashing in, or perhaps on a mountaintop with a, a view for miles. But I wonder how you would answer that question, when do you feel closest to God? I've heard people speak of how they felt God's presence up a ladder, and one who said they felt God's presence as they were coming down a ladder very quickly. I have another friend who had an experience of God's presence when he was sitting in his TV repair van, and there and then he gave his life to God. In the Bible, Isaiah the prophet tells us how he saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up with the hem of his robe filling the temple, and how he heard the angels calling out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Elijah, another of God's prophets, heard God 
not in a mighty wind that came or in an earthquake or even in a fire, but in a still small voice as God spoke to him. In our reading today, Nicodemus, a Jewish leader, especially feels God's presence in a person, Jesus. And he comes to Jesus and says so. We know you are a teacher come from God, Rabbi, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Nicodemus is getting it. The miracles Jesus had been doing were just that. They were signs pointing to who God is and who Jesus is. No one else has done things like this. So even though Nicodemus doesn't actually ask a question, he comes to Jesus because he wants to know, Jesus, who are you? All through John's Gospel, Jesus answers that question in many kinds of ways. Here with Nicodemus, he talks about a completely new beginning, about being born again or born from above, born of God's Spirit. Just as a baby who is born might have their father's eyes or their mother's nose, so someone who is born of God's Spirit will display the character, the image of God. When Jesus, when Nicodemus sees Jesus, this is how it seems to him. There's something special about Jesus, something unique even, that says he has come from God. But that can mean different things. Jesus is a good man. Jesus is a godly man with supernatural abilities. You can change water into wine who tells people about God, who calls God his Father. He might even be an angel. The truth is even more amazing than Nicodemus would have dreamed. And Jesus gives him a, a clue to who he really is. He says the only person who could possibly know about the things he tells him about being born from above is someone who has been in the very presence of God in heaven and who has come down from heaven. Jesus is answering the question Nicodemus should really be asking, but which he would never dare ask. Jesus, are you really God? No wonder Nicodemus comes at night when no one else could see. When you realize you might have discovered God fully present, fully alive in another person, you want time and space to get your head around it. That which Nicodemus would scarcely have considered is something we say every week in the creeds, that Jesus is God's Son, one of the three persons of God, along with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Perhaps we say it too easily, without that sense of awe and wonder and even danger of admitting that God would take human flesh and live on the earth as part of his creation. This passage from John chapter 3, and in particular verse 16, could be described as the gospel in a nutshell. John 3, 16 is probably the Bible verse most people know of by heart after the Lord's Prayer. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is the message of good news. It's the answer to the questions, how can I be saved? How can I enter the kingdom of heaven? How can I find peace with God? But it's not just the answer to the question, how can I or what do I have to do? Rather, it tells us what God has done and what God is like. It tells us that before anything else, God loves the world. On Trinity Sunday, we celebrate that God is three persons in one. And because God is three persons, that means God is love. The love between the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. All three persons exist, exist with 
and in and around each other. Words will only ever go so far when we try to describe God, but one word that is used to describe this relationship of the Trinity is the word dance. As Father, Son and Spirit flow and move around each other in love and with delight. In this divine dance, the three persons within God exalt, commune with and defer, that is, give way to one another. Each person harbours the others at the centre of his being. In constant movement, each envelops and encircles the others. C.S. Lewis calls this a great fountain of energy and beauty, spurting up at the very centre of reality. I'm sorry, on Trinity Sunday, you can't help getting some theology. And because God is love, that means that he didn't create the world in order to have something to love or to be loved. No. It means that before anything was created, God is love in three persons. As Jonathan Edwards, the American preacher, uh, put it, the only possible reason for such a perfect being to create the universe was to extend that love to other imperfect beings. And God shows the love that he is by giving himself. God gave his only son. God gave himself in an extension of the love that he is. Jesus says, the Father is in me and I am in the Father. So Jesus doesn't just show us what God's love is like. Jesus is God's love in human form. No wonder Nicodemus realizes there's something very special about Jesus. And the gospel, the good news, is that you and I and all people can be led into that constant love of God at the heart of God, the indwelling love between and among Father, Son, and Spirit. So when Jesus is lifted up, as he is lifted up on the cross, to die. That is the deepest display of God, the Trinity's love, the world has ever seen, has ever known. The love that is in God himself and the love of God for the world as the Father sends the Son and as the Son gives his life freely. And when we believe in him who loves us like this, we have eternal life. We are reborn from above. As human beings, we were made to bear the image of God, but we rejected our calling. That image was cracked in us. When we are born again, born from above, we are embraced by God, drawn into the love of God that is at the heart of the Trinity. So Jesus says again in John chapter 12, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. We are most ourselves when we are dwelling in the love of God that goes above and around, dancing to the music of God's love, revolving around God, giving him glory as we enjoy his beauty and his goodness, as we sacrifice our lives out of love for him. When we discover, as Nicodemus did, that Jesus has come from God, even because he is God, it draws us into the embrace of God's love that puts him and not us at the center of our attentions and our affections. And because God's love is the love that would not stop at giving the Son for the world, so we embrace the world. As we are most human when we are embraced by the love of God in three persons, so we are living most fully when we embrace others in that love. This is what it means to live a Christian life, the, the preacher Timothy Keller has says. To share God's joy and delight in him by giving him glory, worshipping him and serving him rather than ourselves, by honouring and serving the dignity of other human beings made in his image 
and by cherishing his glory in the world of nature he has made. When a person believes in Jesus, God's Son, whom God gave and loved to the world, then they will also love the world God loves. And as a church that loves God's world, we are to look out and see people, to listen to their pain and the groaning of the world, to learn what we can do, and to link ourselves to others and to the world. We have so much still to learn about this, and we have a way to go as a church. But just as not quite seven years ago, we took a step to look out, to listen, to learn, and to link ourselves by planting a church in the Glen Estate. So now we are taking another step in planting a church in the West Winds here in Ards, as we have been seeking to hear God for our community, for the world that he loves. Paul Hawkins, a member of Glen Community Church, will be assisting Stephen Doherty uh, in leadership at both the Glen and at West Winds. But the work and witness of these church plants are ours, all of us, at the Glen, at St Mark's, and at, we pray, West Winds. A relationship of love that dances around and above and for one another in the love of God the Trinity. So when someone is asked the question, what makes you feel most the presence of God? They might answer, in the love of God, in the cycles of grace that they find among the people of God, the church. Let's pray. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbours. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to others with pure affection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen.
Let us affirm our faith in the triune God. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for, for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We turn to God in prayer now. Let us pray. We come boldly to the throne of grace, praying to the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for mercy and grace. And we worship you, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father of heaven, whose love for the world led you to send your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We pray for the world created by your love, for the nations who are acting in rebellion against your rule. We pray for your mercy and your compassion to flood the nations so that many would believe and know the wonderful promise of eternal life. Extend to them your peace, pardoning love, mercy, and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Son, incarnate Word, our prophet, priest, redeemer, Lord, we pray for the church created for your glory, for its ministry to reflect those works of yours. We pray for our diocese, for David, our bishop. We pray for our parish in Newton Arts, for St. Mark's, for the Glen, for the plans that we have to plant the church in the West Winds. Lord God, we pray for those in our parish and across our diocese who don't know you as their Lord and Saviour. Come and speak to them through the words and the actions of your church. Reveal to them your love and convict them of their need for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Spirit, by whose breath the soul is raised from sin and death. We pray for families and for individuals created in your image, yet broken and damaged by sin. We pray for those suffering from physical illness. We pray for those suffering from mental illness. We pray for those journeying through bereavement. We pray for those deep wounds of hurt that physical illness, mental illness, and bereavement cause. Holy Spirit, comforter, surround each person who is praying right now, who, those who are hurting, anxious, lonely, depressed, or broken-hearted. Breathe on them the breath of life and bring them your mercy and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
and we pray together using the words on the screen, the Collect for Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities for you live and reign one God forever and ever. And gathering our prayers and praise into one, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining with us in worship today. Before we sing a new uh, hymn of praise in closing, it's called All Praise to Him. Let's receive God's Trinitarian blessing. God the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>